welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer. Today I am sitting with someone I've known for quite a while, actually, Jason Group. How's it going, brother? What's going on? <laughs> we are here at Shutterfest 2018 in the Lou, St. Louis, Missouri. And it's, it's a, it, I've said this with a couple other guests, but this is a crazy place. Yes, uh, Shutterfest specifically or St. Louis in general. <laughs> <laughs> yes, both. Yes. yes to both. <laughs> yes, I, I think the weirder part for me is that now St. Louis is home. Right. For me, yeah, so that's, that's a big deal. It was weird driving from South County mm-hmm. to Shutterfest mm-hmm. as opposed to getting on an airplane and getting yeah, here. Just yeah, just slipping over here in twenty yeah. minutes or whatever it is in the fog and rain and all this crazy weather that St. Louis has that that the Midwest has been having for months and <laughs> just driving people crazy. I mean, I'm used to crazy weather being from New York and New Jersey, mm-hmm. uh, but it's weird because like on Easter Sunday. We went to the zoo because we knew it was cold and people in St. Louis would not come out. <laughs> um, so we went to the zoo and it was 50 degrees yeah. and 30 minutes later it was sleeting yeah. and it was 35 degrees in oh, like yeah. a 30 minute span. Turns on a dime. On a dime, which doesn't really happen all that often in the Northeast. I saw a great meme yesterday that said it's, it's January 74th <laughs> today. <laughs> Today's <Yes>. January 74th. <laughs> Although the Northeast has had pretty bad winter as well, and they've gotten socked with a lot of snow. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. I've enjoyed watching my friends <laughs> shoveling their snow <laughs> while I'm like, hey, I went running outside today. <laughs> in the fog. In the fog. <laughs> and then it was raining. And then there was sleet. Yes. All in the same run. Well, did a 20-minute run. <laughs> <laughs> so t- tell us uh, who you are a bit. Give us the lowdown. All right. So my name is Jason Group. Uh, I was a wedding photographer for 25 years in New York City. Uh, kind of, you know, cut my teeth in, mm. in New York and uh, ran a successful wedding photography business for 15 years. Um opportunities came around and I uh, worked as the WPPI director for Mm -hmm. almost five years Uh, and then um, got a great opportunity to move out here to the Midwest working for um, Matt Thompson at at Song Freedom which is now Firefly Song Freedom Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, it's been a journey so I'm going from a photographer to working in a very corporate setting to come moving to the Midwest. The last five years, six years have been uh, pretty interesting. So talk about that. We were, we were talking together about what sort of things you could discuss and we narrowed it down from 30 or 40,000 <laughs> to, yeah. to, those, to those sorts of things really. And how did you, how did you word it? What was, what was the way that you put that? What the things I learned? Things you yes. Things I've learned in the last six years is the WPPI guy, mm-hmm. and then moving to the Midwest. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I'd like. Uh, I, I'm asking because I'd like to know personally, <laughs> legitimately. Uh, you know, uh, and that's been a big topic for a lot of people. You know, when I first took the job at WPPI, and uh, it was it was a gr- it was quite a transition. Um, kind of like crash landing on Mars. <laughs> um, uh, and was it you what know, you I, thought it was going to be? Uh, it it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. It? Yeah, it was, and you know, there was definitely parts of it. You know, from from the outside looking in, you know, I I, I loved and loved WPPI, uh, and. Um, you know, having the opportunity to work on a show and work for something that all of my friends were at yeah. and something, you know, when I was a speaker at and, and it, really it was, something that so many people loved. Yes. Uh, but I think I was not prepared for, you know, working in an office setting, yep. going to work every day. Yep. Not that I didn't go to work every day, but <laughs> well. as most photographers do, I would say 30 percent of it, 40 percent of it is in their pajamas. Right. Um, which is a which is one of the big draws of of, of, of working in the in that job. Right. So getting and working, coming to an office, and I've always been surrounded by creative people. I grew up in a creative family, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, people who never wore a tie to work or you know looked nice for work. Mm-hmm. My dad was a union electrician. My mom worked in the fashion business, but 
she worked as a pattern maker. So, right. you know, they were, she worked in the back room. So, right. you know, um, nobody was wearing a suit. Nobody wore a suit to work, right. you know, and you know, my dad drove a van to work, you know, mm-hmm. cause he was a construction guy. So, right. um, it, it, it was, it was a difficult transition and, and I am fortunate that I learned under some great people like Lauren Wendell, who, you know, I reported to immediately after when she, she was, you know, she hired me. So, um, she was used to working with creative people for many, many years. And she really helped me with that transition. It was hard because she was my, you know, my, in, in the New York police department, she was, she was my rabbi. She right. was, she was my, uh, the person who helped me, you know, navigate a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It was really hard at first because there was a lot of tor- turmoil there and, and, you know, coming in and everybody expected you to just turn this thing into something else, right? Just flip it. Immediately flip, like, I'm going to turn the light switch on and, uh, you know, it's going to be a disco. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> crystal ball's gonna start going <laughs> and, and you know and, and in my mind that's exactly what i kind of pictured i was like all right i'm gonna put on some john travolta and we're, yeah. we're gonna dance is that right i mean to a degree you to you, a degree you went in there thinking that it wasn't going to be as difficult as it turned out to be is yes. that fair to say yes and you know what i think the biggest thing that i learned that i've been trying to tell photographers is like as artists we're taught to not to not accept no for an answer. Yep. And we're taught to just forge ahead. Um, but I don't, I never knew as an artist really what no was hmm. until I worked in the corporate world. Yeah. Because that's a no. Because that's, that's a, a hard, hard no. no. Yeah. You work on something for weeks <laughs> and you present it and you got 10 minutes and then you blow it and you're, you're, you're done. It's over. I'm so sorry for laughing, but you know, I wish people could see your face. You know, when you're, you're just this. done. Yeah, and that's it. And you're like, "Well, wait, I'm not done." They're like, "No, you're done. You're done. That's <laughs> it. That's enough." <laughs> so, as an artist, I didn't really understand that because I think our industry in general, um, we talk about it a lot, but we really don't understand what a hard no is. Yeah, and that's fine. It's it's great. It's wonderful, but. Um, it's something that, you know, I've, I've tried to teach photographers that, you know, a no is really a no, like door slammed in your face. No. Um, and it's hard to get back up after that. Uh, and even from an emotional standpoint, right? Like I think it's the emotional part that's so hard to deal with. You experience that in some ways for the first time to a certain degree. And you're just like, wow, that was, that was brutal. (laughs) It's right? so brutal, so brutal. Uh, and 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 I remember uh, Lauren saying to me, y- "You'll get a thicker skin." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she listens to this because she'll, she'll you'll know. Be, you'll be okay, she'll fella. Know. You'll be okay, fella. Uh, she wasn't. She was never condescending in that way. She, you'll go grow a thicker skin. And, and at first, I was like, you know, what the. I have, does that mean, like, right. I hope I never grow a thicker skin, you know, and again, coming in as that artist, like, mm. you know, I always want to be sensitive to it. I always want to be moving forward, but that I, I look back now as that something that, yes, you grow a thicker skin to understand what that no is, but there's a trade off. There's a trade off. Isn't there? There is. There is so growing that thicker skin. There's a trade off for it. There's something that you lose there's something that you lose. And, you know, being in the industry, there's definitely an innocence that I've lost. Are you serious? That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. Did, you, did you lose it? I mean, I can't go back. That's, well, that's what yeah. I mean. No. When you, it's, it's, you, it's, you, yeah. it's gone. It's gone. And you think, you're, gone. You think that, that going through that series of events and those circumstances that to a degree, that happened to you. Yes, 100%. And. You know, there's part of me that it's, it's a, from a personal standpoint, uh, I'm, it, 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 it doesn't feel good to me. Um, but the wisdom that I gained from it is much more valuable than the innocence that I lost. So, so you don't um, regret it? No, I don't regret it. No. And, and, you know, all the decisions that I've made over the years, I never really kind of look back and, and regret those mm-hmm. things. Um, I'm an emotional beast. Like I, I, I run on emotions and I, 
and that hasn't stopped and it, to a fault you know it's gotten me a lot of trouble over the years <laughs> uh in, in at WPPI and sure. years before it and you know the one thing that i gained out of it was with those no's was that you know saying well i'll just keep coming up with ideas and and that's the one thing that you know, I have inside of me that I learned from a corporate side and, and photographers can take this away from them. A second lesson that I really learned was you're the idea person. You're the content person. You're the photographer who comes up with the ideas. And most of the people that are working behind businesses and offices and are brides and grooms, your job is to be their creative person. No matter what, you should just go down the line of what those roles are. So me as the photographer going into that office, you know, I recognized early that my ideas were valuable because of the insight that I had as a photographer. Right. But, you know, and, and, and I, I mean no, I, I mean no harm when I say that most of the people that do work in offices just want to work in an office. Right. Right. And they want to do their job and yeah. they want to be told what to do. They're choosing that. And they choose that, but when it comes to a creative, and, and I worked with a lot of creative people in the New York office, and they're talented people and good people, but you know, I had a different perspective in that. And what I learned was is that I could just keep coming up with ideas, and I, and, and that part of me has taken me to where I am now, and where I was at WPPI, and and will continue in my career those ideas are valuable and working on that and being creative was always a big thing for me personally but um take those ideas that content those ideas in your head are valuable to the other person because either they just don't want to come up with the ideas because it's hard or they can't or they can't right which is a key thing that right. i learned and they can't so when I would get a no, I'd just be like, all right, let me just come up with another bunch of ideas and right. throw them out, throw them out did the wall. Did you get some yeses? Yeah, I did get a lot of yeses. <laughs> okay. I did get a lot of yeses. And that, you know, there was definitely a part where you just had to wear them down until they just couldn't say some no that, anymore. Right, right. Uh, so, and that's exhausting to do after a while. And, oh, and, and, you know, I think that's, you know, one of the reasons why I realized that it, I, I needed to move on. And when you start learning... It, well, I forget the word. What is it? It's corporate knowledge where you know going into meeting you're going to get a no. When I was the fresh-faced kid in the office, yeah, you know, I didn't know I was going to get a no. I was going in thinking I was going to get yes. But after a while, and that's when you know it's time to go. When you know before you go into the meeting it's going to be a no. Really? Oh, my. So, yeah, and that's just wisdom and knowledge, right? So Experience, sure. And experience. So you stop trying. Which is, I think, what happens to a lot of people in corporate settings. It's like a burnout, kind of. It's a burnout thing, and, you know, you, you want your life back. I mean, I put in a lot of hours when I first started uh, BPI, and I was writing and right. creating things and coming up with new ideas. And, you know, then after a while, it becomes like, well, i got to get my life back here. And, you know, is this worth it, what I'm doing? So you put in less hours, but then you realize, you know, as an artist, you're not, you're not working at 100%, and that starts to eat on you. So like all those things kind of, you know, it's the whole world of emotion. So for me in my new role, it was really about, and moving to the Midwest was about, you know, my kids are eight and 10. They're at, the, they're just such an amazing age right now. Mm -hmm. They'll hate me in a few years and that's totally cool. <laughs> but right now they, I'm, I'm a hero. I'm, are you I'm dad. The, yeah. yeah. I'm the dad. It's you know, the it's awesome. It is. Uh, and, and <laughs> I want to be that dad and 90 minute commute each way was, yeah, was, was three just killing me. Day, three hours gone. out of my day, leave at seven o'clock, I get home at seven thirty. Yeah. you know, 12 hour, 13 hour turnaround each yep. day. Like I couldn't, I couldn't be home now. You know, we work Monday through Thursday, oh, yeah. uh, eight to four. I pick the kids up at four thirty. We go outside, the incredible. kids go outside. I'm coaching my little guys flag football team. Take them to a cards game. Oh, yeah. I love the cards. Yeah, I can't too. even get them over Yankee hats anymore. Oh, Completely indoctrinated birds, into the Cardinal baby. Nation. Oh, I love it. Yeah, um, it's it's a cute little stadium. <laughs> it, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so great, and I miss Old be Bush because I grew up on Old Bush. But yeah. the new stadium is fantastic. It is a beautiful stadium, and and it, it, it's such a different experience than going to a Yankee game. Oh yeah, or a Mets game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the it, the. Um, the uh, 
the people who go are they're keeping score next to you. Like, you know, the guy next to you is like Tommy Pham. He's new. For, he's due for another hit. And I'm looking at him I'm like he's got he's got a book that's he's got it, it's 50 pages. So he's been to the last 50 games. That statement's based on experience, research, and lots of writing. He knows what it's about. It wasn't like he's due for another hit. Oh yeah, he's not like just throwing it out there. They're like, come on, guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy next to me knows who the next four batters are. You're I don't so, know. You're so right. Yeah, that's it's, so fantastic. And that's wonderful. And, you know, there isn't cursing. Nobody's... Not as much. Not there's, as much. There's a little bit <laughs> Not when they're much. playing the Cubs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You, those are not family games. You don't no, take your kids no, to those games. No, but it's not games. a Jets game. So <laughs> let's be clear. Let's be clear. I brought them home for Christmas, and I brought my, and my little guy to a Jets game, and Eli was like, wow. That was right. rough. He's just old enough now that to was understand. That a hard rated game He's like, right are those there. guys punching each other on purpose? I'm like, yep. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. They want to kill each other. Yes, they are. And they're both Jets fans. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> So, you know, I want to be home for that stuff and be able to take my kid. My wife's a Notre Dame grad, so Mm -hmm. now we're only five hours from the stadium. Yeah, you're close. Uh, And so everything is driving distance here. I seem to spend a lot more time in the car. (laughs) Um, But But you're with your family in the car. But I'm with my family. (laughs) And and that part is really wonderful. And so for that, I'm really thankful to have this new chapter in my life and be around for that. And uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's been a tough transition for me moving from WPPI to this new role. And, you know, well, um, I wanted to ask about that. I'm thinking about yeah. something that I don't want to forget about. And I'm, I'm going to stay in the rough waters for a little bit mm-hmm. um, because I know there's a great light at the end of this tunnel. But I, I, I was curious regarding maybe the transition that you just referenced. What does what what you would you, how what you put it is that you lost like an innocence or maybe mm-hmm. some sort of a naivety like you had to in a sense like grow up to a degree maybe it and was, you and there's a trade-off right <laughs> yeah what how, and you're not getting it back like you said no. that too and and all of that makes a lot of sense to me what i'm wondering is how does the fact that that's gone and that in in some ways you're a different person as a result yep how does that manifest? Like, what are the ways that that shows up now? <laughs> a lot more vodka. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I know nah, that's I, I mean, know that's yeah. tongue in cheek, but yeah. I mean, it things are different now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I needed to stop internalizing a little bit of it because it's you know kind of each inside. Did you get help? Uh, no. I mean, I've got a great wife who was very supportive. So you got help. She's there yes, for you. I, yes, I got. I mean, help. she's. Yeah. I, in other words, she's. She sees what's up. She's yep. right there with you. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, I'm fortunate to have a good friend support network. Yeah. And you know, people who understand. Uh, uh, I had some good coworkers too. Yeah. Um, and that's what made this transition so difficult. Is that, uh, you know, uh, it, it 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 you know went from, uh, you know, we were in battle together to maybe not being uh, friends anymore. You know, really? instantly. Because, really? you know, you can't, you're in battle, you know, yeah. like you're, 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 you know, trade shows is a, is a, is a battle yeah. and, um, you're working and you're working hard and there's a lot of camaraderie and you're doing things and you're, 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 you know, you're, you're just trying to do the right thing and, and, and put, put a great show together. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's, it's There's war. a lot that goes down behind the scenes. Is that, yeah. a, is that a good guess? There's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And, you know, everybody has their own agenda. Mm-hmm. And you're working for, you know, a business that's trying to, working with a lot of businesses who are they're selling to an industry. And, you know, that's the, I think, the third part of it that I like to talk about is that, you know, we talk about the industry. What's the good for the industry? Right. And the bottom line is, is that I think the innocence lost in that is that to really, there's no industry. It's just a bunch of businesses all put together who have their own agendas that becomes an industry. Hmm. So there's really no good of the industry. It's what's good f- for you and what's good for me. That's the industry. So there's not a collective good for I mean, the there might be people industry. that beg to differ. There's lots of there's lots of boards 
you have Imaging USA that is yeah. has lots of boards and they truly believe in industry. They do. They do. They do. And they do a good job as far as, you know, what what that is. Well, I think that I do too, but in part because I've never considered it otherwise until 24 seconds ago when you just said there wasn't. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yeah. You just said that and I felt my mind blow up a little bit because I had never considered the concept and, that way. And, and, and I never considered that concept too until I had drinks in New York with <laughs> uh, an older gentleman uh, who's been in the industry a long time. I'm not going to name him. Okay. And he sat me down and he gave it to me. And it, there was a lot more four letter words and a lot yeah. more alcohol. Okay. But I walked away from that like, wow. Okay. You know what? You're right. You're well, right. That is something else. And it, that was, I think part of some of the innocence lost, but it wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't a bad thing. Like, but you know, while imaging USA has their direct, they, they, they're working to do good. They are. Right. At 100%. Right. But they have their own agenda, too. Of course. Of course. It's get more attendees. Yep. Right? And, and more members, more attendees. And a bigger attendees. show, yep. more members because of what they're doing. So they have their agenda, too. Sure. Same thing with Shutterfest. You know, they're, yeah. Sal is doing his thing to make better photographers. Yep. But better photographers make more money for everybody else. Yes. And it's not a bad thing. No. But as a collective, there's no industry. It's just a bunch of businesses whether nonprofit or for profit, yeah, all trying to do the same thing, and that's what makes the industry. But it's it, it is different in that sense than other legit industries in your mind. I'm asking. In my well, I don't really have any other industries in my life. <laughs> but I mean that you're aware of, like you know, there are other industries, like the photography quote unquote industry, right? Is not. It's kind of its own bird. It, it is, so to speak. It is. And I think it's different than, you know, some other industries that have much bigger formal industries or unions for that matter. More of a cohesion. Union is yeah. an industry. Sure. Right? Right. The sheet metal workers is an industry. Right. But the interesting part about photographers is that it's not really an industry beca- or motion picture industry workers. There They're union go. people. Yep. Right. But photographers decided in the 20s that they wanted to own their rights to their images. Right. And that's why there's no industry. Interesting. Okay. Right. So it all makes sense. It all makes sense. So, but you know, you always, as a photographer growing up in this industry, you think about it's good for the industry and what's this and what's that. But in the end, everyone kind of has their own agenda and it's not a bad thing, but you know, seeing a little bit behind that curtain, (laughs) you get a little ugly sometimes. Yeah. You kind of, you kind of did get a peek behind the curtain. Is that right? (laughs) Like you feel that way. Yes. Like you kind of went where not a lot of people go. And you got to see the cogs and the gears. And the and you crying survived. and the yeah. scratching and the fighting. Yeah. And, and, it, and none of it is bad. Like, that's business. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, what's interesting about our industry is that uh, where other industries where you sell widgets, it's just business. But our business is different. It's personal. Very much so. It's yeah. very personal. Mm-hmm. So you mix in those emotions of photographers work and we have all these businesses who are trying to educate the industry and, and generally that's what they want to do to help. But it's personal. The work is personal. You know, the work that you see out on the trade show floor is personal. And it's a very fine line between selling that work and um, creating art. And, you know, we could go on for hours on that. But, um, you know, being in the business of, you know, putting all these boxes together and then the education behind it and then, you know, picking great speakers to be at WPPI and now on my side working with influencers who use our products. What's your official title? President. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought it was like the marketing, the CMO there or was the marketing CMO, guy. And then I took on some extra roles and they're like, you could do this job and that job. And why don't you be the president? You just be the boss. Right. Okay. Um, which that may change. That may change. I like being CMO. Yeah. Um, because of the creative aspect of it. And that was one of the draws with Matt where he's like, why don't you just come bring all those ideas over here? Right. Um, and just have fun with it and create and art. And, 
you know, it's been a real struggle for me. Like I haven't really done any art or photography projects in a long time and it's killing me Yeah, and I got to get back into it. And I'm really hoping, but it's the family life thing yeah. that always keeps you from doing it. Cause that's going to take time away from those boys. Every single time. Yep. Every single time. So, um, on this side, being able to do some of that creative stuff, but then, you know, we have a small crew and, you know, um, Matt is busy doing a lot of different things. Yeah. So, you know, helping to manage that, but maybe in the next few months I might be getting back into the more of the creative style. So it's great because it's such a small business. We can just, you know, but you're, you're, you're president more flexibility there. Yeah. Right. So. I, I, that leads me to my, maybe one of my last questions. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but what does the next year or two look like for you? You think, uh, I think we have some great products that we're selling. You know, I think that being able to work with photographers, creating videos and slideshows. And um, I've learned a lot in working with, um, uh, I never worked with developers before. I hope I never have to work with more developers <laughs> ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, a whole other no, language that I needed to learn. I have no comment. <laughs> you just get yourself in trouble. Love my developers. Uh, love, 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 love my developers. <laughs> love them. Uh, so I, I, I've, you know, every every step is 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 a different job and a new journey. And um, what I'm looking forward to is some of the new stuff that we're going to be working on. And um, I'm not done building community. Like I really enjoyed that part of it and, and working with photographers. Uh, my biggest love was on the WPPI on the uh, award ceremony and the print competition. Mm. I see myself being involved. I need to get involved in that kind of stuff again, sure. whether it's with, with imaging or with WPPI again, or um, that, that, that part of helping to photographers grow and that feedback. Um, and building that community, like I miss that part a lot. That's your wheelhouse. Yeah, it was. It was my wheelhouse, and I really enjoy that part of it. So um, I definitely see myself getting more involved in that stuff. I think you would be a good person to ask this question to. I just thought of it. A lot of a lot of people, especially people like the. So I've been in the in the industry that's not an industry for about twenty years. You've been twenty five, <laughs> thirty years. That. Like we've it's been, not an industry, right? Yeah, we're yeah, not. Yeah. We're not a. Uh, we're not new. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people that are like us or even more 40 or 50 year people, many of them, in, in my experience, are kind of down on things. Yeah. Right. They're, they're frustrated or maybe it's burnout mm -hmm. or maybe they're confused or they feel lost or they're angry or, you know, afraid. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think that let's say that there is even some truth to that, but do you think that um, that things are trending in a positive way for the industry that's uh -huh. not an industry, or are they are, are are they are we in rough troubled waters? I mean, you've been around for several changes in our yeah. industry, and I'm yeah. using air quotes. Yeah, um, you've been around for those changes. Uh, and each one is a huge disruption. It's interesting in our business how much things change every few years. Really? It's, it is. It, it, it is just crazy, you know, thinking about where we were. I think the way to make money as a photographer in our business today is to put your head down and work yep. and do a lot of it. Yep. And I think a lot of our educators out there have talked about how to work less, make more money. I, I think we're kind of past that. Hmm. I think most successful businesses are busy because they're doing a lot of work. They're working hard. Um, so I think a, a, a successful photography business today is more of a, uh, uh, mom and pop fast food place, like a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. It's got to churn out a lot of lunch specials. Yeah. Right. Uh, as opposed to there's a lot less room for tavern on the greens mm -hmm. and expensive restaurants. Mm -hmm. I get it. And so I think the ones who barrel down are going to shoot 50 weddings a year and figure out how not to burn out doing it. Right. That's the future. Yep. It's 50 weddings a year. 
uh, or it's 25 weddings a year and 100 portrait sessions. Uh, and it's using social media in the proper way, not just talking about how they're going to create this. It's literally spreadsheets yeah. of, of doing it, elbow grease. implementing it, and yeah. the elbow grease of doing that. Right. And, uh, you know, if you're not good at it, you got to find someone to do it for you or you yeah. just got to move on. You got to go somewhere else. You got to go somewhere do something else. something else. And I'm not sure hmm. that's the business I would... I always struggle to shoot less, make more. Right. And uh, I recognized that when I left six years ago that that's where I needed to go. Right. And I still think that's that that's the future. You got to work a lot. You got to do it. And, and uh, you know, if that gets you to a bunch of high-end weddings and... Uh, and you can spend more time doing those great but you know uh i think the work's still there <laughs> people still getting married don't be surprised if it if it doesn't happen overnight or if it's not no. like oh i no it's hard right and, and 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 once you get there you can't take your f- finger off yeah you can't rest on your laurels you can't at all rest at all and i think that's the biggest mistake that most of my friends have made right. myself included mm-hmm. uh and and that's the same age old thing but it's harder, it's harder, and you know, um, you're, you, you, you know, it, the barrier to entry gets lower and lower. Yeah, it's not changing. Yeah, uh, it, it's easier than ever, and uh, um, you know, again, getting back to business and, and being smart about what you're doing. Good advice. Yeah, thanks. I like that. All right. Thanks for your time doing this, man. This, yeah, I, it's I good talking that, to you. Now that you're the, you're the president, I'm a little intimidated <laughs> by that title. <laughs> I love it, though. That's great. It, it, it suits you so well. It the really does. Yeah. I love it. Thanks um, for giving up some of your time here. I know you're lots going on at this thing. Everybody's running around like you're crazy. You're welcome. Uh, We're going to get to a cards game. Yes. Dude, I'm only two hours away, and I'm right. a, I am a cards fan. All right. So, yeah, we can make that happen. All right. Have a great rest of the convention. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Right on.